Hey everybody, Sam Kavaris in the Nimnik Sports Update. So the draft is Thursday night. It's prime time. Begins at 8 o'clock. Uh, teams will be on the clock. By the way, the uh, general manager of the Colts apparently has revealed that they will take Andrew Luck despite a lot of speculation that they were really looking at Robert Griffin III. But Andrew Luck will be the first pick. Redskins have the second pick and they'll no doubt take RG3. After that, it's hard to say because uh, you know, whether they're drafting for need or the best guy available and whether somebody wants to take Trent Richardson in the top five. He might be the best player in the draft, but certainly that running back position is an overvalued or an undervalued position in uh, the National Football League. The Jaguars are scheduled to draft seventh, which means that they would draft about 9.15 or so. So what do they do? Well, the best part about this time of year is the fact that you don't have to pay any attention to anything anybody says or right because they're either lying, trying to throw you off, or they don't know. And that, to me, is the best part of it. You start reading about, oh, there's, there's no market for the seventh pick, or, oh, the Jaguars are fielding offers. Yeah, half of these people are lying, the other people don't know. So just when it happens, it'll happen. Now, the Jaguars certainly have some interest in Melvin Ingram, although they haven't talked about him. They have some interest in Claiborne as a, as a cornerback. Uh, but those guys may be gone by the time they get around to them. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be very interesting. If Blackman is there, I think they'll take him. I also think that if Ingram is there, the Jaguars may stay at seven unless somebody wants to jump up <clears throat> two or three spots and the Jaguars still think that they can get some value for their number one pick at defensive line or at wide receiver. It is kind of a, wi a deep wide receiver draft. Don't be surprised if the Jaguars use two of their top three picks to take wide receivers and add them to the current core out there. And by the way, Last week at that at that mini camp with the veterans, I was pretty impressed. Some of these guys look like you know actual professional wide receivers. Whether it was uh, Laurent Robinson or Lee Evans, uh, Cecil Shorts looked very good. And again, these guys could be all airport, which means they look the best walking through an airport. But we won't know anything obviously until they start playing for real in September. Um, meanwhile, we were out at uh, the TPC at Sawgrass to take a look at what they're doing uh, there, and i got to tell you, I was pretty impressed with what was going on out there. Uh, the place looks fantastic. Uh, you got the best field in golf showing up now that Rory McIlroy and Tiger will commit uh, coming up as well. Mickelson's coming. Everybody's coming, basically. And, you know, they've always had nice hospitality out there if you're willing to pay the money, if you had a hospitality suite. Uh, but for the general fan, this is now going to be a real fun experience. They've put places all over the golf course where you can go into the air conditioning, you can cool down, you can buy a cocktail, you can get a beer, you can watch some golf on television, and then go back out there. And I think that's a big part of it when it comes to May, that a lot of people want a chance to just get a respite from the weather, particularly if it's very warm that week. And then they'll go back out. It used to be one of those, you know, I had a beer and I'm, I'm looking to see what player I can see. Now you're really going to have an opportunity to enjoy yourself. So if you're going to the players, take advantage of that coming up on the 7th of May. I'm Sam Kavaris, and that's the Nimnik Sports Update.